We just sat down with Hong Kong powerlifter Alex Yim, who is a junior, and we discuss his recent experiences at World Bench in Texas and the Asia University Cup that was held recently in Hong Kong. Alex comes up with some incredibly valuable points as to why powerlifting means so much to him and why everybody should become involved in the sport. His passion, energy and love for the sport are clearly evident and this is a short conversation that you definitely want to going to listen to. It's going to uplift you. It's going to put a smile on your face. And if you are a power lifter, you'll be able to relate to the wonderful stories that he shares about the sport itself and what it's like to be in competition and to be in the same hotel as your powerlifting heroes. Welcome to Coffee and Conversations with Champions. The powerlifting edition. So we're sitting down now with Alex Yim. And Alex, you just come back from the World Bench Press Championships in Austin, Texas. And um, I believe you did quite well. So we want to just chat to you about that. We want to chat to you about your bench press, about your lifting, about what the sport of powerlifting means to you. So can you give us a intro? Who is Alex? Um, yeah, thank you for having me, Nick. Uh, my name is Alex. I'm from Hong Kong. I'm a powerlifting athlete. I'm in the uh, 66 kilogram uh, category, and I'm still a junior. So for now, I've participated in two international uh, uh, powerlifting events. The first one is uh, uh, the Asian University Cup, uh, which in which I uh, fortunately, luckily, I got the uh, second place there. And then the another one is the one. Uh, two weeks ago in Austin, Texas, which is the World Bench Press uh, Championships. I, uh, I got the sixth uh, rank there, which is not bad at all. And yes. uh, I'm pretty sacrificed, sacrificed with my performance as well. But the biggest takeaway in that experience is that you get to learn about how big the world is. You get to learn about all other athletes out there no matter if they're from Europe, no matter if they're from America, no matter if they're from the rest of Asia, all these people are the best athletes on the earth, living in the same hotel, uh, lifting in the same warm-up room as you do. That, that, that is one of the greatest moments in my life. Yeah. Oh, that's fantastic. Can you, can you tell us a little bit more about that? What was that like? Because I know it is... It's overwhelming and exactly what you're talking about. I felt when I went to Sun City last year for um, the World Bench and then the year before that for the World Champs. And you think you're walking around and you're seeing all of these people that you see on Instagram that are your heroes and they're here in real life and they're eating breakfast at the table next to you. Yeah. So what, what was that experience like for you? That is probably like the greatest experience in my life so far yeah. so imagine you're living in a hotel where like it is full of the greatest probably thing on athlete on earth from literally everywhere on earth and you know when you walk like walk down the lobby you got you have breakfast the guy next to you who is trying to make his coffee or like trying to like you know press the coffee machine to get the coffee out is actually like uh like a french uh a member of the french national team and then uh when I walk into another lobby, I see a bunch of like Great Britain guy, and then uh, some of them are famous. Uh, some of them have a lot of uh, photos on their social media. I uh, I, th I take pictures with two world record holders, so it's like mm, something that you cannot uh, imagine when you were like starting off what like back then when we were like starting off lifting we were just heading to the gym you cannot imagine that oh you're in the place where you're with the best athlete on earth so that is like, yeah one of the great experience oh that's fantastic so for you alex how did you get into powerlifting so uh it can be traced back to i think 2017 or 18 when i started off lifting weights 
uh, I was a basketball player back then. So I went to the gym. I trying to I was trying to lift. I was trying to squat so that I can jump higher. Right. But then eventually I have I was squatting a lot, and then I just love squatting. And this is like the beginning of me myself getting to the gym, uh, getting to know about uh, lifting weights in general. I have no idea what powerlifting is. But then I started to do a lot of research, do a lot of studies, uh, see a lot of YouTube videos to learn mm -hmm. how to you know, how to bench press, how to deadlift, how to squat. That's how I uh, get to know the sport in general back then. Right. Um. Yeah. Then how and, did you uh, how did you start competing? Well, I actually I have a very short experience of competing powerlifting. I like to compete with mm. other people in the gym. Like, oh yes. my god, I lift. I live more than you, and I feel good, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and also, like, there's some mini competition in the gym, you know, where you're trying to see if that guy over there is like, is he lifting heavier than me or lighter than me, right? But right. I started competing in January this year, actually, with my first powerlifting competition, competition, where, in which the reason why I compete is that I actually saw that um, my total. Or my results is actually not far away from the Hong Kong record. Right. So I was like, oh, I can give it a try. I can go trying to compete and see if I can break the records. And I, I still haven't break any of them, but I'm yes, kind of yes. uh, confident. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I, I hope that I can break them in the near future, but yeah, that's how I came to competitive politics. Okay. Oh, that's fantastic. How have you, we spoke very briefly about the community and like, as you said, you, you, you see your hero struggling to work a coffee machine, you know, I love that story. So, what, how have you found the powerlifting community? It is the, one of the greatest communities uh, where I belong to. Um, we all, we don't speak the same language, mm -hmm. right? But we, 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 our mind works like the same. We know what we're doing. We, we know when we do bench press. Oh, I know what you're doing. I know what you're talking about. I know what kind of concept you're talking about. I know what you're referring to. Mm. Uh, when you talk about a uh, composition, I also know what are you what are you uh, trying to express. And that is one way we kind of link together, even if we do not literally speak the same language, or like, even if they do not speak good English. Um. That's the first thing. But I think another thing for the powerlifting community is that we really encourage each other to push ourselves to get our to achieve our own record. record yes. And achieve our own limits. That's the greatest thing. Um, but at the same time, they even though you are not the best powerlifter on earth. They, a lot of us, were try, still trying to encourage you to get what you can get. And when you can, when, if you can get something that uh, you expect or you can break your own PR, we all celebrate for you. And that's the greatest, greatest thing in this community. I would say. Yeah, absolutely. What has powerlifting taught you uh, about other areas of your life? Have you been able to carry the lessons you've learned in powerlifting? To other parts of your life. Yes, there, I would say there's a lot. Um, you know, there are a lot of like things that you can learn from powerlifting, right? Um, one thing is the um, mindset you get uh, from this sport. You get resilience. You get um, um, consistency, commitment. Where you know you're lifting, let's say four sets of. Uh, seven reps deadlift yeah. today, right? It's so hard, especially yeah. when it gets to like the six reps or the first set. But you have to still go through, right? And that's how you challenge yourself to uh, do the hard things and do the things that you do not want to, but you have to do. And I think this mindset applies to a lot of aspects in life where, you know, in our daily lives or in our career, in our schoolwork, in our study, we have a lot of challenges and we have a lot of things that we do not want to do. We have to do it. So this is the mindset that we learn. I think we all get to learn powerlifting. This first thing, and the second biggest thing I learned from powerlifting is to is that it, it's the sport taught me how to optimize my way of life. 
from my sleep for to my nutrition to my training program right you have to be afraid you have to get that level of optimization in these areas so to maintain your performance also to um make sure that you're performing well and mm. this is also the fundamental of getting how how to get things done in other area uh, other areas of life as well so yeah fantastic why would you or what would you say to people who are considering getting involved in powerlifting why should they get involved in powerlifting what are the things we've spoken about it we know the community the self-development the challenging but for you why should people get involved in the sport i think the first thing is that first thing is that powerlifting is a, a sport where you can work on your progress mm. you can yeah. uh name any of the lifts in, in the big three right your squat today you squat 100 let's say working your progress you see your progress you keep you keep consistent you keep going to the gym uh, you keep sleeping good eating good you can see your progress you start to see progress it's now squatting 1 to 10 1 to 20 1 to 30 1 to 40 and that is that makes that gives you the one of the greatest meanings of life actually and it also empowers you that how you're gonna perform this how you're gonna work on yourself and also makes you to believe that you can actually work on yourself to make mm -hmm. yourself a great uh, to a better version than you are yesterday and that's the first thing and the second thing is that you can as what i've mentioned a lot of mindset a lot of optimization of uh, the, the way of life you can learn from the sport um you know um as youngster a lot of us do not care about sleep right we go to bed yeah. let's say at one today and then we go put, put it back at four yeah, uh, tomorrow and we don't care about it but if you get into the sport you start trying to study or you're trying to uh, optimize how you sleep you're trying to optimize how you eat you start to take care of yourself you start to um make sure you do the right things to take care of your own body and that's a very very good way to practice self-love i would say so um, now, yeah, these are the two reasons I think I can think of. Yeah, sure. yeah that, that, that I think is the best description or the best reason why someone should consider powerlifting that I've heard. It's a wonderful way to practice self-love, you know. And I think yeah. if you're looking at your training and how your numbers are moving, if they're moving in the right way because you're doing everything that you need to do, it's proof that you're looking after yourself. You're getting the sleep, you're managing your stress, you're getting in your hydration, your nutrition, your training. So absolutely, absolutely fantastic answer. Tell you know, that's the best we've had on the podcast. So <laughs> I love it. Yeah, okay. thank you. Thank you. Okay. So for, what does the future hold for you? What are your plans for the next year? And then what are your plans going forward for your powerlifting career? So my plan is to keep working on myself. Um, keep developing myself, keep trying to perform my best in terms of performing my training and in terms of my uh, time management, in terms of my sleep and nutrition. But my next goal is actually to uh, perform well in my upcoming competition in December 2024, uh, the Asian Classic Powerlifting uh, Full Power in Uzbekistan. I will aim to get as good as, pos as possible in terms of numbers I can get and I hope that I can break some Hong Kong junior records as well but yeah so far this is uh, my goal okay fantastic why have you picked that competition is it just because the regional it's easier to get to and you've got the time to train for it what is your reasoning behind that competition um no more it's more about time I would say um, there are a lot of competition coming out, especially mm. in June and July, especially yep. in July, but it's already like early June now, right? So I don't think I have enough uh, time for me to prepare for those competitions in July. So I was like, why not, uh, why not like take a longer time to uh, work on myself so that I can prepare for, I have enough time, about five months for me to prepare, <laughs> I'm sorry, prepare for the one in December. Yeah. Okay, fantastic. And that's a very, very mature and responsible approach. 
It's about making sure that you're able to get um, what you need. So what does your training look like? Can you cha share a little bit about your training schedule, how you train? So I have a um, very fixed program of training. It's kind of complex, but um, to make sure that I uh, train with progressive overload, mm -hmm. make sure that I do not mess out every session. Uh, and it also makes sure that I have enough energy for me to keep going on for yes. the long term sustainability of my development. Right? Because if I'm trying to mess up every day, it can't be sustainable. I'm going to get injured or I'm going to get a high level of fatigue in terms of my muscles, in terms of my uh, uh, central nervous system. So, this is like how I'm going to generate. Uh, how I'm gonna describe my training programs to progress uh, 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 with time to make sure that I pick whenever I have to pick, which means that, that when the competition comes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but at the same time, I say uh, I would say that tracking my tracking how I sleep in terms of when I go to sleep, when I go to bed, when I wake up in the morning, and how much and how good I'm sleeping is a big part of my uh, program, and also. Uh, nutrition, yeah, I'm trying to, uh, I will make sure that I eat the right food and do not eat the food that I do not need to eat mm -hmm. uh, or I should, should not eat. Yeah. Right. I think you, you've hit the nail on the head there as well. It's not eating the food you don't need to eat because it's the, we have two, two kinds of food, right? We have food we want to eat and we have food we need to eat. So focusing on that, how, how difficult has that been for you to focus on? I wouldn't say it's so difficult because I'm not like a guy who loves to eat a lot of things that I do not have to eat. Um, I'm even like I don't drink alcohol. Right. And even if I'm allowed to drink alcohol, even if I'm not an athlete and I can drink alcohol, I, I, I would not say that I'm a big drinker. Um, so in this aspect, I wouldn't say that it's so hard for me to make sure that I do not eat the uh, things that I do not need to eat. Yeah, okay. especially like there are a lot of healthy diets out there. You mean there's a piece of raw salmon, right? It's, it's just tasty and it's, yep. it's the right thing to eat. You have a lot of omega-3 and protein and yep. it has nothing and uh, no seasoning on it, right? So it's, I want to say it's so hard. Yeah, it, it, I think we make it a lot harder when we start to look for food that's not great for us to eat. We say, oh, but can't I have that? Can't I have that? And when you put that kind of energy into looking for food that's good for you, it becomes much, much easier. So how, how was yeah. the University Cup now recently at uh, the Queen Elizabeth Arena? Uh, it was great. I performed the best I could perform, I would say. I hit a total of 500 kilo with my 66 uh, kilogram body weight. And I'm very fortunate to get the second place in the competition. Um, I would say that it's also very lucky for me to uh, to be able to compete here in my home home city. Uh, you know, like I don't have to fly to travel to go to another city to, for the Asian Cup, which makes me, uh, which is a, a big advantage for me. So I'm pretty grateful for that. And, and you know, a lot of other my coach, my coach Dr. Yip and other uh, team member, uh, team Hong Kong members are also in the venue trying to support you, give you advice. Um, so these are uh, these are very essential for me uh, to get this result in the competition, and I'm very good with that. Fantastic! It was wonderful to watch because I mean all of the different teams were getting a great amount of support, but the the support I saw from the Hong Kong team it looked like a family supporting one another, and it, you you, uh, you guys looked very very close. So. How is it being part of the Hong Kong team? What is that like? Um, being part of the Hong Kong team is great. Uh, I would say as compared to a lot of other countries, we don't have a big number of financial resources that support us. But we still, you know, we every Saturday I go to the gym, I train together. I, uh, you know, I spend a lot, I spend Long, a long afternoon every Saturday in our gym mm -hmm. and I spent a lot of time trying to ask questions to my uh, coach and also to uh, other team members as well 
but at the same time, except training, um, we like to help each other out with a lot of uh, in a lot of situations as well. Let's say if there are local powerlifting competition going on, we still try. A lot of us still we still try to go there and volunteer for a, a, a spot being a spotter for loading yes. racks or just like helping the competition to uh, uh, to smoothly go on. And yes. that is something that I like about uh, being as a team member here uh, in the Hong Kong team. Oh, fantastic. How is the powerlifting scene in Hong Kong? Are you seeing it grow? Is it uh, more younger people coming in? How are you finding the, the community in Hong Kong? It's definitely a growing sport. Um, as compared to, let's say, five years before, or ten mm -hmm. years before, I think more and more people get to know about what powerlifting is. Um, back then, we tell people, oh, I'm a powerlifter, I do powerlifting. A lot of people kind of do not oh, what? understand they what they go like, the, they think it's oh, weightlifting. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 that's what, that's not what we do, we, we do usually. So, uh, but now, I see, like, when you go to a commercial gym, you started to see more people, guys and girls, doing powerlifting stuff. I mean, if you arch your back when you bench, yes. I mean, there's like certain way that you can see that, oh, you're a powerlifter, right? Yeah. I, and I think, I, we definitely hope that there will be more and more people getting into the sport and also to compete uh, on the local level and as well as international level. Well, I think it is definitely a growing trend we can see now in Hong Kong. And yeah. more and more people in general are just going to gym. So it means that like more, more and more people are going to pilot as well. So that's a good yes. thing to have here in Hong Kong. So w where would you like to see the community and the sport in Hong Kong grow over the next few years? Mm. That is a good question to ask. I think as a sport that is not, that is not as popular as those uh, traditional sport like swimming or basketball or football, mm -hmm. right? The, the, the first thing we want to have is to have more and more people doing the sport itself so that we get more um, um, uh, uh, recognition, more uh, report from, uh, from the media, mm -hmm. more news, uh, more people are trying to look at the sport, right? And these are essential for us to uh, develop the sport and you know, when more and more, more, more people do the sport, they started to post on social media and more and more people do it, I see it. And they were trying to consider participating in it and eventually competing in it. And that's how, when we get a lot of com competitors in the local level, that's how we get more competitive and we get better results as well. So yes. obviously, that's the thing that we not do is to try to promote the sport to the general public to get more people in and to more people compete, that's the way we can get this sport to a high level. Okay, fantastic. Thank you. So, Alex, from your side, is there anything else that you would like to share or talk about? Well, well, this is a great question. I will follow. Well, I think definitely there are lots of things that I'd like to share, but um, if I would say is that I, uh, I, I'm pretty confident that more and more people will get into powerlifting, especially as what I've mentioned, social media, you know, when you see people uh, squatting a lot, you get impressed, right? And when a lot of people see it, I really hope that more people can join it, and that's how not in the local level, Hong Kong level, but in the in worldwide, international level, we can try to get this sport into a popular sport, mm -hmm. into a very, very popular sport, as popular as sports like basketball or just like running, because it is just a very good sport to participate in, especially in terms of growing yourself, making yourself, having the progress, right? And that is how I, um, hope how the sport can develop in the future and eventually I uh, it'd be great if it, it, it can be uh, 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 added into an Olympic as well uh, as its uh, popularity grows so 
And that's why um, as a polyester, as a member of the community, as a people, as a person who knows about the sport, I, mean, I think we all need to kind of share about it. We have to talk about it. We have to get people to know about it so they get, we're going to get pop, more popular and we're gonna, it, it's going to benefit more people as well. Absolutely. And you, you made such a good point about the Olympics. So I think that's every powerlifter's dream to get our sport back. Uh, we'll do to get our sport not back into the Olympics. So I think we'll see now with 2024, if I'm not mistaken, I think this is the last year for Olympic weightlifting. And then I think maybe within the next four to eight years, it would be something absolutely fantastic to see. And what I love about the sport personally is it doesn't matter, as you, you said, you came from basketball. It Powerlifting will benefit any sport that you do and it'll benefit every area of your life. So there's no reason everyone should not be doing powerlifting. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, absolutely. Oh, fantastic. Alex, I want to say thank you so much for your time. Before we go, uh, tell us about your success at uh, the Asia Univers the University Cup and then now in Austin. So you placed second at the University Cup. Were there any records? Um, that you broke and the, any records that you're going after? I mean, totaling um, 500 course, is fantastic. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I did not broke any record. I did not break any record yet. Yet, yet. But uh, I have, uh, I had a, yeah, a total 500, uh, 175 in squat, 150 in bench, and uh, one, uh, a 210 in deadlift. So uh, uh, I'm still 22. I have a long way to go. Uh, I will wish that I can make a great achievement in the future, in the long run. Yeah. Oh, fantastic. And how was, how was Texas? What happened there? Texas, Texas I, uh, I, I had a 115 uh, bench on the second attempt. On the third attempt, I tried to go for 120, but it was so close. So I didn't quite make it, but I'm going to definitely make it next time. So okay, yeah, good. and then I ran for six. Okay, okay. And then you place six. I mean, that's fantastic, though, huh? for your for your second international. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah. that, that is uh, not bad at all. Absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. Alex, I just want to say thank you so much for your time. It's been awesome to talk to you. Your energy is fantastic. I think you're, you're a great ambassador for our sport, not only in Hong Kong, but in the world. You've got, like, your passion is very, very evident. So thank you for your time. How do people find thank you, you thank on social you. media? Oh, yeah. If you can, uh, my social media name is Alex Y underscore K underscore ish. That's my account. I know I don't have so far. This is my main account. I don't right. really have another account. So yeah. Okay. So if you share that with me, then I'll put it in the comments as well. Great. All no right, problem. Awesome. Thank you, Alex. We're going to end the recording wow. now. I just want to again yeah. thank you. Thank you for having me, Nick. Uh, my pleasure. And I'll chat to you now in a second once we finish recording.